Hello and welcome to watch me. Today we have another unboxing video for you. This is the unboxing for the Ming 1709. It does feel a little soft and flimsy. I actually don't know if there's a box inside. So uh, let's get started and take a look. nicely bubble wrapped here on all sides for it to take impact you can see a slim box inside with the logo so this is the packaging fairly uh, clean and modern looking i like the texture on the side of the box and the color it's a very nice copper color and it looks like uh, they've kind of sealed the box as such to uh, kind of indicate that it's new i suppose uh, let me get it unwrapped Slides out. We have a pouch inside. This cloth pouch with a tag and that has the logo as well. Good fit and finish on all of these components. Actually, they feel really nice. Take this out so we have a very nice looking uh, leather uh, pouch uh, with stitching on the sides the texture and the quality of the material looks top-notch uh, nice to see a different presentation for a change compared to the usual uh, large watch box so let's get it open There you have it. That is the new Ming 1709 with a blue dial. Let's take a closer look at the watch. Um, the inner lining again is superb. It's a very soft uh, kind of suede and it really looks like you could use this as a travel pouch and uh, the watch would be protected very well so nice of them to uh, have this level of attention to detail on the packaging so um, as you can see this is the blue dial version of the 1709 watch and it does look uh, really impressive in uh, person especially the center of the dial with the texture uh, looks very nice it comes on a Jean Rousseau strap um, made for this watch looks like a suede top with uh, blue stitching uh, that matches the dial it looks quite uh, nice and uh, curved end lugs um, look quite nice on the watch so let's uh, touch upon the specs first quickly before we move on to uh, more details. So it's a 38 millimeter um, dial and the thickness is around 10 millimeters so it's very slim. And the lug to lug is one of the uh, big uh, you know, like unique uh, aspects of this watch because the lug to lug is very short at uh, 44 millimeters. And it has the sort of uh, FP Jean style curved lugs, which have sort of become a trademark for Ming uh, or from the starting uh, 1701 watch. So it, it maintains a unique aesthetic appeal and the curved, uh, you know, end, uh, curved strap uh, fits really well on this particular case design. And it helps kind of make it look a bit more integrated than your typical uh, watch with straight lugs and so the 
crystal is sapphire uh, with double sided uh, AR coating and it looks like there's a super lumino x1 filled in into the hands and the luminous ring that you can see around it's a uh, hundred meter uh, water resistant and that's pretty much it um, 20 millimeter lug width and it tapers down to 18 mm um, very well spec um, very compact feeling watch that um, has uh, changed some of the I, I would say it has evolved uh, quite well so I did have the 1701 that they originally released and that had a lot of similarities to this in the core design aesthetic but uh, it was very simplistic in terms of the dial finish and the way the dial uh, you know the markings were done and the center texture was done here you can see uh, the watch has evolved and uh, it has a little more heft to it uh, the dial texture is absolutely incredible On the wrist you can sort of see the watch wears fairly compact yet it has uh, quite a significant presence due to the way the polished bezel and the dial kind of stand out. Uh, the short lugs means that the straps hug your wrist quite a bit and it's a very easy watch to wear. This is called the Caliber 330M1 by Ming. Uh, which is based on the Celita SW330 and it is modified by uh, Schwarz CTN and supposedly it is exclusive to Ming. Uh, what, what, what it gives you is uh, independent uh, adjustment on the hour hand. You can jump the hour hand to kind of move uh, uh, in the GMT uh, time zone. Um, quickly without having to mess with the synchronization of the minute hand that is kind of cool it's a nice uh, addition to the watch it goes only one way it doesn't go back so you'd have to come back a full circle to essentially reset the watch and uh, the regular time setting position is the same so yeah there's no date complication there is no second hand and it's super clean uh, visually strong with the clean look of just the hour hand and the minute hand and the adjustable uh, jump power hands gives you a sort of a travel uh, friendly kind of complication uh, 42 hour power, power reserve as with any Celita uh, based movement nothing great um, in the modern era the loom on this watch is tremendous and it has an almost Tron-esque quality to it very futuristic looking um, evenly applied and uh, quite bright and it's, there's no mistaking this for any other watch uh, when you see the loom. So that's a very uh, nicely designed um, aspect. Minor quibble I have with this watch would be with regards to the length of the hour hand. As I said, um, this minute hand is one of my favorite uh, designs, but the hour hand I feel is a little too long. Um, they wanted it to touch the ring however uh, it does kind of feel like it's uh, too close to the length of the minute hand it would have been nice to have a little more, more differentiation there between the two if i had one more minor criticism um, it would be with regards to the crown i somehow feel the design of the crown the, the kind of rib pattern that it has it's very nice to grip and it's good to use but the design somehow doesn't gel with the rest of the watch in my opinion. Um, it has a very smooth quality overall and then the crown has a sort of jagged sharpish looking quality to it at least visually and I do think maybe a slimmer um, kind of simpler looking crown without maybe the brushed uh, parts in the middle 
would have suited the watch a little more that's at least just my opinion uh, overall though yeah i i do think they have done a tremendous job and uh, they have evolved quite uh, well and definitely they are a strong player in the watch industry now it will be interesting to see how they evolve the brand into sort of the base series uh, in this price point and uh, whether they're going to focus uh, on more models in that range or whether they're going to focus more on the top end range that's my uh, short quick video on the ming 1709 um, hope you enjoyed it uh, please like and subscribe and uh, do leave any comments or questions you may have and I'll try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Uh, thanks again folks. Uh, cheers. Bye-bye.